what's up everybody we're back with another live stream hope you guys had a great day so far um we streamed earlier today this morning and i told y'all i would be back with another stream and so here we are with this next stream uh we're gonna be picking up this is gonna be part seven of nino cooney um i had to make a run today i had to run to um best buy actually to uh make sure i could get another lavalier mic because what I was doing I had um uh, Casanova Frankenstein versus yeah Casanova fight <laughs> yo I would love to see that I would love to see that go down that would be dope um I had to run over to Best Buy because this uh this whole week that I've been um working on stuff been recording all this footage and everything like that i think i said on the earlier stream but i ended up uh losing all my um my footage but well, no, i didn't lose my footage what happened was um all my audio is messed up so i had to go get a new um a new lavalier mic and since they're protesting I <laughs> I did drive but I was in traffic for two and a half hours going there and an hour uh, coming back so it was it was pretty brutal and I'm back at it uh, I got my mic I'll probably start filming um, my uh, dialogue portion for my review for Nino Cooney tonight and try to have it up first thing in the morning. Uh, I've got an interview uh, tomorrow with uh, your player too, so I'm excited for that. And uh, other than that, um, not much is going on, man. Uh, Oak City Gamers, how was your stream earlier? I hope you guys really do like this new layout that I'm uh, that I decided to go with. It's I think it definitely fits the aesthetic of me being into fighting games and um, just kind of like the, the the idea and theme of what I, I like to go with. Actually, I should change the lighting. He said it was going to tell you about that. Uh, we had a vid we did recently. He said it's 5% of our car stuff with bad audio. Oh, snap. What kind of mics do you guys use for recording? There you go, the lighting. <laughs> Yeah, it's something that I, I started putting on. Like, I've got some merch that I need to put this and the other one I have uh, on. And I'm really excited to see if uh, people are receptive to it. So, hopefully people dig it. You said, uh, because we can really record everything. <laughs> um, Yo, I'll tell you, if you, if you guys are looking to do, like, if you're doing, um, car vlogs and whatnot there is a lavalier mic that i can recommend to you guys to use that um you can use on a phone or whatever and if there's more than one of you guys like if it's two of you it's a do it's a split um lavalier and the thing is it only picks up your voice because of how it's uh the cardioid pattern so uh if you want i can definitely uh shoot you link to that because I've been using it um, for a lot of my in-person interviews and it's definitely definitely worth it so um, to, yeah we're gonna pick up with Nino Cooney and um, I'm definitely gonna stream tomorrow oh never mind <laughs> You and I have a similar ba uh, similar background audio mastering, so you already know. I don't have to say anything. Uh, yo, what's up, Zero? How's it going, man? 
So uh, tomorrow, I'm going to do another stream tomorrow. I want to get your guys' feedback. Do you guys want me uh, to stream the Zelda game? Or do you want me to stream Grandia? Do you guys want me to stream Fire Emblem? Uh, Borderlands 3? Or do you want me to stream... Um, I would say uh, Trails of Cold Steel, but I can't do that because of Embargo. Um, Skies of Arcadia. Legends. Man, I haven't eaten today. I don't know if I told you guys, like, I literally am at a point now where I... I eat once a day now. I need to start eating more, but I just eat once a day. <laughs> It's really not good that I do that, but it is what it is. All right, so you said Ooxy Gamers want you to stream what you want, but keep it diverse for your audience. Yeah, I like to go back and forth between like playing uh, fighting games. Uh, I like playing some shooters. I really want to, um, one game I definitely want to stream is Bulletstorm for the Switch. I have it on PS4 and Steam. But um, I really want to pick it up for the Switch. I know a lot of people want me to stream Deadly Premonition. I, I haven't played this game before, but I'm not against it. You know, you said, I was hoping you would eat before stream so you would not get hungry during it. Uh, I'm not going to eat until uh, Lehua gets off at like 10, 1030. So I got another four hours till she gets off. Uh, I've been taking these supplements and these supplements have basically been getting me to a point where like I'm just not hungry It suppresses hunger and I'm dropping a lot of weight and like Anything I'm doing is just drinking a lot of water so I mean it helps uh, I definitely need to lose weight. That's one of the things my doctor has been saying. I've been trying to get myself back to to uh, what I was like uh, a couple years ago, about three, four years ago before I had cancer. Uh, when I was in my prime, I was cut. I was 180 pounds. And then when I went through uh, treatment and everything, uh, my reaction to chemo was, uh, I just, like I, I started balding. Like I'm still have bald spots in my hair. Like, all my hair fell out and I just gained a lot of weight. So it's just harder for me. Um, now to just get cut just because of all that radiation but i'm trying I'm, I'm trying i'm trying to get it back is that another thing you know my friend that likes mercury have in common eating one meal a day it's not even something i'm like intentionally trying to do it just kind of is something that is which is weird I kind of I kind of just end up just only eating like once. All right, what are we doing here? All right, so we're taking the cauldron, right? Yo, it's, it's so crazy. So it's, it's pretty crazy. Yo, what's up, Stephen Hart? So I got to show you guys. Probably I need to change the lighting uh, so you guys can see this. But um, here we go. So my business cards just came in today, too. This is my business card. see it that came in and then on the back side a Zach Fair quote of embrace your dreams my links and everything they earlier you asked me how I beat the dragon in this area I don't remember 
Yo, that dragon in Zestaria was insanely hard. I, that dragon was just harded. Oh yeah, so for anyone who hasn't joined the Discord group, um, here's the link to the Discord if anyone wants to join that hasn't already. He said, oh yeah, watch, go watch an episode of our flagship show, The Thrifting Game. Oh hell, you modded me up. Here's, yeah. <laughs> no, bro, I mean, you guys can drop, you, you can drop your link. I don't care. Like, I, I don't stress about stuff like that. Uh, drop, you can drop the link uh, if you want. Join the Discord. We have a lot of content creators in there, um, podcasters and whatnot. So if you, you want to uh, drop the link in there as well, you can. Uh, my only thing with uh, dropping links and, and, and Discord, same thing there is just like, just contribute to the conversation. You're already doing that, so you're good. You don't have to worry about anything. There, you say you fought to tooth and nail in one. I, I don't even know. I don't know how you did that. Yeah, it is. It's it's really tough trying to do all three. Um, I agree. You know, trying to do YouTube video uh, production, streaming, uh, and then you throw it in social media on top of that. It's um, definitely a grind. It's it's a definite grind. Um, and I'm I'm doing all that full time. It's insane. Magic words. Five of you guys to our auxiliary. Jeez. Pulse, fireball, frostbite, broom, broom. Open says to me. Well, uh, give me a rundown on your story. Like, how did you guys come together? Like, what was the idea behind the creation of your channel? what six so if it's six here then it must be what 12 25 there you, you're in north carolina wow
Yeah, the thing that like used to get me when I was, um, you know, when I first started out doing podcasts and whatnot, when I was, um, you know, interviewing other people, the majority of the folks I was interviewing were, were on the, uh, we're on the East Coast, so whenever I would, um, whenever I would get one of them on the show, it's like I had to be a heller. That's another familiar. I forget. Hmm. Uh, um. Alchemy. Hmm. Alchemy. <gasps> you are very small, master. But it matters not. Your right to command me will be judged in battle. Huh? Where? Where is it? Ah! Aha! Now to arms! So let's see is a phrase we use in my city to sell stuff. So Oak City is super generic here. Okay, that said, we're in Raleigh, North Carolina, the city of Oaks. Our first name was Games in General, and that's it. Generic everywhere. You said um Steven We're definitely in Raleigh. And Steven, you're like, oh, Okay, we was just saying there is a real Oak City East. Oh. See, I'm learning a whole lot. I've only briefly ever been to North Carolina. Like, I don't know a whole lot about it. North Carolina hot summers unless you're in the mountains and mild winters unless you're in the mountains. There's also beaches. Raleigh is in the Piedmont region, aka Big Roman Hill. Steven, you know folk in Caroline. At least here in Hawaii, man, we only have uh, hot, hot, and hot as hell. Those are the only three temperatures that we get. stupidly hot here like I mean it's normally hot I can't really complain because I mean compared to my, my home country it's not as bad
Okay, okay. Okay. You guys have known each other since you since you were kids. Okay. And how long have you guys been going at it uh, with uh, YouTube and content creation? What's up? Yeah, YouTube is definitely a definitely a grind. Uh, damn, five hundred sub sub sandwiches. Dude, we rarely have a spot out here for uh, good, like good sub sandwiches. Primarily what we have here is, uh, I mean, we got Jersey Mike's, but thank God we got that. That's just about the only, only good spot we got for uh, subs out here.
Oh, I'm about to wreck this one. All right, match is over. Or not. Do it one more time. No, man, you're good. Keep talking. I, I appreciate it. Zero, you said I found out if you transfer your file from either the PS3 or Vita version of Cold Steel 1 to your PS4 game, you can get max bond points with the characters as a bonus plus. Does that mean you have to have beaten the game? Uh, to get that or just having a saved file in general Zero you said more costumes and extra money except if as long as you upload us. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay so Why I look so damn shiny Over here looking like mr. Clean Forehead shiny. Like, let me turn these lights down. There we go. This is 35 episodes. Uh, wait, wait. He said, I worked in audio editing and went to school for film editing. So. Popped the phone up and we recorded three pilot episodes of the drifting game. One of each became the first episode. Uh, yes, 35 episodes. Ooh. So how are you liking uh, the content creator journey so far? So the 13 game, our journey has been shared. So serious collaboration. Support another. It doesn't get too much for each of us. Oh, okay, okay. So it doesn't get to be too much for, you, for any of you guys. What's your um? What's your long time? Uh, your your long term goal with uh, content creation that you're looking to do and like what's some short-term goals that you guys are looking at say in the next uh six weeks to like a year six weeks six months and then up to a year Wow, that was a backhanded compliment.
He said to entertain ultimately next six months, uh, probably a limited t-shirt campaign for the diehards. Uh, one thing I think, you know, I definitely, ugh, I definitely suggest that you guys should do, uh, especially when it comes to like t-shirt lines, like if you're content creating, put merch out there. Doesn't matter the size or of your, uh, audience or your reach or anything like that just put merch out there because um people will get it people will get your merch and uh always be off you said next year to reboot the series uh like you did this year i dig it I'm definitely gonna check it out. So do you guys go into pawn shops and then barter for better prices? That would be interesting. Yeah, that would definitely be um, a unique concept that I don't think is widely done, if at all. I would definitely pay to see that. This season two is a panel called what you can do with do with on my phone. Oh, so you're working. Or your uh, video recordings done with your phone too? said uh yes we do usually in the thrift stuff it's a backup for bad thrift day huh. so you guys uh so what's the rundown of all the content you put out do you do thrift runs streaming uh, seasonal um content as well right Oh, wait, what do you use to edit? What are some um, upcoming projects you guys have in the works?
That's a, that's a really good question, Steven. Yeah, I'm curious about that. Is it legal to record without people's knowledge uh, when you're doing these bartering or? Like, how does that work? Oh, okay, okay. Whew, I'm sorry, guys, for yawning. I, man. I thought I would... Everything I've had. I would have thought I'd have been better by now. So you just had to disclose if you're recording if you're a business or news agency. probably slept only like two or three hours today total yes sir hello i said it was Dude, look the show started on being funny that's the only thing we try to be hey man as long as you're having fun and enjoying it that's all that matters and Steven, I, I mean, when I, when I finish this stream, uh, I got, I still gotta go pick up Lehua. I gotta cook dinner. And, um, I need to record footage for the review for this game. And, um, I gotta prep. For the stream for um we I mean, not to stream but the interview with Josh uh tomorrow your player too wait who's going to bed I'm not going to sleep Yeah, it's only 6.51, but I didn't sleep all day yesterday, and I stayed up today until like uh, 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. Uh, I was trying to edit, because I have like a week's worth of content I need to work uh, edit. Like this game, the review for this game was due today, and um, I had to go and get a lavalier mic because the lavalier mic I used had 
really shitty audio. So, uh, like eight or nine o'clock, I, I went to sleep. I just literally intended to just lay down and I ended up passing out. And so I, uh, I ended up, um, going to sleep and I woke up two hours later and then that's when I came and I did my stream. And then when I got off the stream, I had to take Leho to work. And after taking her to work, I had to go and get that lavalier mic, which I was, I sat in traffic for two hours going, uh, just to the middle of the island because we have protesters that are protesting on every island, uh, about this, uh, telescope to be built on Mauna Kea. They, like, they don't want it, even though it's a stupid situation. I'm Hawaiian and I don't agree with uh, locals being against this mountain. I mean, not this mountain, but this uh, telescope being built. And uh, yeah, then when I got back, I rested for like a couple minutes and then hopped on the stream. Wait, let me catch up. Oh, and Cass, we started with TTG, then we started retail runs and what the flea market and also do occasional heat city game. So on a weekly basis, what's the general consensus of how much content you put out? Like, and do you do one episode of each per week or one every so often? HLO says nearly 12 here. Steven, he said, Nintendo Enthusiast retracted his bad review. Kind of late for that. Already skewed the Metacritic rating. <laughs> well... Yeah, I mean, Metacritic, what they did, what Nintendo enthusiasts did was so unprofessional. It was ridiculous. Um, I mean, Bandai Namco, like any other company, when they send you a review code, there is a process that you, you, <laughs> I mean, do y'all want me to roast them? I mean, we, we can start the campfire. I mean, I'll, I'll roast, y'all know I have no problem roasting people. Um, I mean, as a journalist, as a gamer, as a reviewer, and as someone that, you know, not only my audience, but like companies trust to do reviews and give quality. I'm so annoyed to catch myself there. I'm so annoyed that they decided to put out that video. They are the only ones with the exception. I think one other person put out a video after, after, after Nintendo enthusiasts did that and see, this is a problem. This is the problem I have with these Nintendo channels. And this is a problem I have with content creators as a whole. Um, not all, not all, but most. There's this thing where, ah, uh, I need, I feel like I need to be politically correct because if I go in guys, I'm going to go in so hard on Nintendo enthusiasts. And I'm going to clown them and it's going to, it's going to be an ugly spiral. It's be an ugly spiral. Uh, politically <laughs> damn, damn right.
see if i if i were to just go in and just start roasting people as much as i want to with these campfire things i think i'm gonna have to take them over to twitch or somewhere maybe mixer where i won't get hit with the bad hammer or demonetized like you know youtube keeps doing every time i do a campfire i don't but um oh man yo fabian what's up you just got me uh you just came in well, i'm about to roast so i'm about to roast nintendo enthusiast bro you know how i tell you they put out that uh they put out that scathing video which really hurt the sales of this game i have right here that i'm streaming they um yeah you, you walk into another campfire oh god i'm about to oh, shit let me put my control let's put the let's go to the home screen okay okay let, let, let's change the lighting up here change the lighting up. you know what there we go oh okay i'm about to go in because we got to give the people what the people want right <laughs> Oh, let, let, let me stretch. Oh, <laughs> I'm starting to think I'm making an account anywhere just to see these. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like I'm, I'm about to become, I, I feel like I'm about to become famous just for these rants. Oh my God. Okay. So basically, Baby, I'm going to give you the rundown since everyone else is caught up to me. I'm going to give you the rundown. So Nintendo enthusiasts, that uh, YouTuber channel, they went and they retracted that review they put out about how broken uh, this game, Nino Kuni, for the Switch is. Like I said, they are the only ones, with the exception of some other jackass, that decided to do it for clicks. Because this is a thing. This is what I cannot stand as a content creator. When I watch other YouTubers dick ride to get clicks and clout. I can't stand it. I cannot stand it. Absolutely hate it. I hate when they, you know, when it, it, and there's nothing wrong. And I, I, let me preface this. There's nothing at all wrong. If you see a formula that works. <laughs> if you see a formula <laughs> that works and you can incorporate some, some aspects of it into your content, then fine. That I have no issues with. There are things I'll use myself as an example. I put myself on the spit roast. I, you know, one of my mentors is Gamer Thumb TV, a good friend of mine too. And there are things that he does that I'm implementing into my, how I'm doing YouTube. Case in point, I am implementing now, I'm going to start implementing doing, um, planning out my streams, you know, setting a schedule, uploading them, you know, in the sense of, um, not re-uploading my streams, but letting it known, letting it be known like, okay, this day, this, this is the game we're streaming. This is the stream. I'm going to break it out into, you know, my content is planned out for the month. So I'm going to be implementing that from what I see Fabian does. I'm not going to do this whole thing that a lot of YouTubers tend to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not keeping smaller YouTubers uh, creators down. Dude, bro, I, I'm telling you, bro, I need to have you just hop on like the Discord or something. We could just like, yo, I swear, we just have 
everyone just hop in on the voice chat and just 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 go off oh my god um what i'm not gonna do is i'm not going to steal well not steal that's too harsh of a word i'm not going to copy fabian's layout for his streams i'm not going to copy his style his cadence and his intro everything that he does i'm not going to be copying point for point for point what fabian does because what fabian does he blazed the trail for himself and is the og in that regard i'm inspired by that but i'm not going to copy fabian but i see so many youtubers that have absolutely zero direction and if you look at the top of the you know the top of the gaming uh hierarchy on youtube and i will talk shit about the higher ups because well, them fuckers rubbed me the wrong way last year. So, in other words, nobody's safe. <laughs> I take issue with the fact that you look at people in screen wave. I just call it out. I'm calling it out because that's what it is. Look at people in screen wave. Look at how RGT 85, Nintendo enthusiasts, Overthink Gaming, Player Essence, Spawn Wave, 8-Bit Eric, the Game Chasers, and more. Everyone that's in that little fucking circle. Look at how... <laughs> you cannot differentiate them from one from another at times they all oh and dreamcast guy you know that that other one that i'm not too fond of look at how they've got this whole aesthetic of what works yeah same titles same thumbnails same expressions it's either this 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 or if they want to look surprised, they go, ah, or if they really want to make it look like this, something special, they make sure that whatever they're holding, say the switch or phone or game or whatever, they hold it like this. They look at it like this and just imagine this microphone is a big fucking dick and they're going like, They got that dick sucking face. So they're all doing that. Then you see smaller creators who are doing anything they can to get noticed by these bigger guys. And there's this mentality that these smaller creators have that, Hey, I need to get noticed by a bigger content creator because if they notice me, they shout me out. They come on my channel. I go on their channel then I'm going to grow. Here's the thing, people and children sit around the campfire. I need to let you guys know this. I need you to hear what I'm about to say. Okay. Okay. And just to see, just to show you guys, how serious I am. Let me put on my fedora right here. Okay. Okay. I got my fedora. Okay. We got our fedora and, uh, we, we're about to, we about to really talk about this. You know what? It's bright. I can't really see. Let, let me do some more. Let, let, let me, let me throw my shades on. Okay. So what y'all need to understand is the fact that it does not matter if you get noticed by these bigger channels. It does not matter if these channels shout you out. It does not matter if they come on your channel because their audience are accustomed to things that they do. 
And the reason you see so much cross pollination of RGT85, Dreamcast guy, beat em ups, yeah, that other guy, and uh, all these other guys of the spawn cast is because they kind of came up with that niche. So the minute YouTube switches, and look at it, look at it like this too. Have you noticed that they've all kind of plateaued on their growth? So if they switch up that formula, they're going to lose their fan base. So they're able to maintain where they are, which is fine. Then you got these smaller people trying to go on the spawn cast, trying to get noticed by them, trying to get them to shout them out. And that absolutely leads to absolutely nothing. So with all that being said, I'm sick of smaller creators copying these bigger channels. I'm sick of these bigger channels putting out absolute average bullshit for content. I am sick of seeing the title when they're writing a review or doing a video about a game and they hold the game up. Is it worth it? It's either motherfucker. The game is good or it's not. Don't waste my damn time. I'm sick of these generic thumbnails, titles. I'm sick of seeing every, okay, here's the other thing I'm probably sick of and, I, and Fabian and the, the chat, I don't know if you guys would agree with this. I'm sick of seeing commercialized reviews of games and products. I need to know, is the game good? Is it bad? Is the console good? Is the phone good? And I think this is a problem across all, not just gaming YouTube, but YouTube as a whole. You have so many people that are just trying to be the next whoever is at the top. And then the thing with gaming YouTube that I can't fucking stand is that if you get on their bad side, like I got on their bad side last year when I called out that motherfucker player essence, for his fan base coming at me and threatening my wife and them sexually threatening to rape my wife, which is why I don't have any respect for any of them. Not OJ, not uh Dreamcast guy, not RGT 85, not uh beat 'em up woods, not any of them motherfuckers. Because when everybody was dogpiling on when when OJ's fan base is dog piling on me, the motherfuckers did the same goddamn thing. And if you're okay with that type of how to, how to do that, no, no, you, you got, um, I have absolutely no respect for you. So I have no problem whatsoever shitting on them motherfuckers and screen wave. But I'm so tight. Like, the thing is, you get on these people's bad side, what they what they think, they think they can do this. They think that they can block you from growing. They will and like if if there are I had other people now that that were in my Discord when I had one before that don't talk to me now, or they try to do this whole mob cancel culture mentality and come at you. So they did that shit to me and blocked me from working with any content creators last year. This was a year and however many months ago that this shit happened. And what happened was that's what made me pivot my podcast because I was interviewing YouTubers and then got to the point where a lot of them wouldn't even fuck with me because they didn't want to upset the gods of screen wave RGT 85 and all these others, right? And player essence. There's some of the people who dick ride them that are in my discord right now. I'm just saying even in 100 but i want you guys to take away from this aside from my incoherent rant you have to create content that you enjoy that you're passionate about that matters to you and is somewhat relevant have a direction have a goal Work towards it. YouTube is not easy. Now that I'm doing this full time, it's not easy, but I love it. 
it's stressful at times, but th- I, I take this stress over the stress I had of working 18, 20 hour days, six days a week where I barely saw my wife more than once a week or only if I came home and she was sleeping, where I barely communicated with her beyond anything other than texting. That's stress. But this, can any, uh, oh, here's it, it, a little spoiler. When it comes to YouTube, anyone can do it. Now, can anyone be successful? That's up to them. And this mentality that you got to get a big channel. No, that doesn't do anything. I've had big channels shout me out. I've had Garrick of ACG gaming. Who's got over 600,000 subscribers retweet, reshare and shout me out. Guess what happened? I didn't grow from that. Fabian, another big YouTuber, good friend of mine has, you know, shouted me out, reshared my stuff. He's in the chat now, but I haven't grown from that. My other friend, amazing Lucas, same thing. The dude's almost, he's at almost 500,000 subscribers. Didn't do anything for me. Jonathan Morris has over 1 million YouTube subscribers. I shouted me out, reshared myself and everything. Guess what? I didn't grow. Shout outs, like you said, Fabian, are incredibly overrated. Incredibly overrated. If you make good content, it's like that saying, build it and they will come. They will come. People will come and they will eventually come around. The biggest thing, and I, I've been telling my wife this since she's a content creator as well, you have to be able to position yourself in a way so that you get noticed because just putting up videos while that's great. At the same time, there's another aspect to content creation that a lot of people don't get. You got to market yourself. You got to learn how to be your PR. You can't discuss, you can't use social media as a diary. And I see a lot of content creators that are killing their brand. And I say brand because anytime you're out here in front of a camera and you're pushing and working with these companies, you're a brand. And a lot of people think that, and I think this is because of the, the, the Facebook phenomenon where everyone thinks everything that they think. Oh, guess what? I took a shit today. I need to tweet about it. Oh, I, you know, I got my dick sucked off by this hooker. I need to talk about it. Not everything needs to be said. And yes, YouTube is going to demonetize me for saying that, but whatever. You make the quality content and say like, I, I, you know, I, I told my wife, you know, you're playing like we got this game, Nino Cooney beginning of this week, Monday or Sunday rather. So in getting that code, Nintendo enthusiasts put out that bullshit video and it hurt and I Namco, it hurt the sales of the game too. So that was an opportunity. Not only did I already want to play the game, but I'm playing it. And because I'm in the right place at the right time, and we'll we'll use, we'll use this as an example. So this is, or actually let's do it. I wish I had a diagram I can use. So my phone right here is Nintendo enthusiasts. They're talking shit about the game, which is here. So they put out this scathing idiotic video, which draws everybody's attention to the game because they want to know, is this game as bad as this trusted authority is saying it is? I am playing said game. And because I'm playing the game, traffic is funneling right here, which as 
you all saw when I was streaming it earlier this week. The constant question is, is the game as bad as they said it is? Now, you don't always have to do that. But that was a mere stroke of coincidence. But I was at the right place at the right time. And as a lot of people got to see my stream, they saw the Hula stream, they saw all these other people streaming the game, and they got to see nobody was running into this issue. And nobody who reviewed the game had this issue. They just hurt their brand by being about that bullshit. I get controversy creates cash creates clicks but if you're going to be a reviewer have some fucking integrity you run into a bug in the game try to see if you can replicate that issue why are we getting codes for reviewing games if we're not doing that our job is to review the game how does it play how's the performance if an issue like what they said popped up, which I'm going to be completely honest, I think the motherfuckers actually went and ran an emulator, overclocked it, and that's what it was. Because nobody else, I tried this, the game on three different switches, and I didn't get that issue. And anyway, I digress. What ha it, 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 It's just one of those things where if I get a code, like I got a code for Trails of Cold Steel 3, which doesn't come out until the middle of October. I got it today. So I'm going to play it from tonight onwards. And if I get any type of issues in the game, I'm going to try and replicate it. I'm going to document it. And I'm also going to inform the company, hey, this is in here. I did this. This is basic testing. Because basically, we're testing the games. Does it live up to this? Okay. Is it something that they can fix? Or is it inherently a flaw in the coding or inherently a flaw in just you know the game as itself is it something they can fix that's our job but again i'm gonna go further with this rant because this is something that i really cannot stand i see people and i know many of these youtubers they get these game codes they play anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes to an hour maybe two or three of games that may be 40 50 60 70 80 hours and they put out a review and then they use content video footage that's either a from the trailer from the press kit that we're given or they take it from another content creator I'm heated because River City Girls and Fabian, remember I told you about this. My review of River City Girls was ripped off of by a content creator I know. A smaller one. That motherfucker got more views than me. He made a five minute video using my fucking content. So it's not just bigger content creators like Philip Mution, which also fucked that motherfucker because he ripped off of my review where is it at? Oh, it's in the other room. My review of the Ori Real RK Pro 5 arcade stick for the Switch. He was asking me about it because I'm going I'm to let y'all in on something. I'm going to let y'all in on something. If you see any Nintendo channel or a video game channel review a arcade stick, and if you ever see those motherfuckers holding the stick like this, that tells you they don't know what the fuck they're doing because if you're going to review a fight stick, you're cupping it like wine, not like this. So it just, it, it, I'm, I'm just, I'm annoyed with content creators because we are supposed to be and this is where I am legitimately pissed off. We are supposed to be the very thing 
that gaming journalists stopped being. We're supposed to give good impressions, reviews, and be honest, have integrity. We're supposed to be gamers who actually play video games and not some peon jackass that gets a code and can't be, can't even beat the introduction level of Cuphead. But it's amazing how so many content creators are just as bad as gaming journalists. When I watch reviews now from gaming, from, from gaming YouTubers, I just wonder, can I even trust the damn thing they're saying? Did they, and then the other question is, did they even really play the game? Because look, when I see a, 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 a Nintendo switch review, first thing I go is I go to my, my page. I go to my friend list and then I go and I look and see, okay, here's one. I go and look, did you put out a review? And if you did, how many hours did you put into the game? Hmm? How many hours? Because I see so many, so many, they put out, they put out reviews and barely play the fucking game. Or they're notorious for this shit. Oh yeah, I'm going to hype the, the game to high hell, but I barely play it. I'm going to put out a review, but I barely play it. We're supposed to be better in gaming journalists. Why aren't we? Why is this about this high school bullshit of trying to, you know, fit in with Screenwave and all these bigger YouTubers and, and, and all this other shit? Why are we not better? And I'm upset because I generally, I love this. My passion is this. And I'm frustrated with the bullshit that I see. There's another thing I can't fucking say. And I don't understand why people do this is why do motherfuckers stream state of play or, or, or. Or uh, the the Nintendo Directs. Why am I going to go to your channel to watch you react to something that I can go to the official page and look at? Why? Why? And then why should I feel sympathetic to these jackasses that do that, who get hit with the copyright strike or 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 a claim for? for streaming somebody else's stuff. I, I don't get it. Oh, you said also about the negative videos about games that aren't even out like battle tales when it show footage from a tutorial. Bruh. Yo. Hey, I mean, you can go in on that. You play battle toes. How many times did we see on Twitter? People talked about how horrible the game looks, how it plays. And they didn't even play the game. Seeing the game in motion and looking at the stills is entirely different. I know I'm, I'm probably a heat magnet right now. I'm probably pissing off a lot of content creators with things that I'm saying, but look, I cannot, I can't do this. Like YouTube is all about you, the creator. And I'm just expressing some things that I, I'm, I'm frustrated with this. I'm sick of the direction that is gone. Is it, uh, I mean, I'm just, man, bro. I'm just really frustrated with. 
you know it's like i feel the same way about just about youtube across the board i mean hell the same shit's going on in the tech youtube scene it's got its hierarchy too it's the same shit in the fgc that's probably why i don't really fuck with the fgc but it's just we're supposed to be better And the other thing that I'm so tired of, I'm so tired of seeing content creators with the, the cop, the copycat stuff. You know what I mean? People are copying me and my podcast. I mean, people started a podcast because they want to do what I'm doing. And there's not even, even anything special about what I'm doing at all. You know, I interview voice actors. I interview people in the gaming industry. I interview celebrities and people are like, man, what's your secret? How do you do this? How do you do that? I don't have a fucking secret. I, it's called DM them, email them or tweet at them. Ask and you'll get an answer. It's that simple. You said a lot of viewers see right through those copy and paste YouTubers. Antonio, you said copycats suck. They do. They absolutely do. Like I can look, I look at some channels and I see people just do it. I'm like, yo, you're just a cheap copy of somebody else. Why would I even, why would I watch anything you put out? When all you're trying to do, especially the people that bounce around and let me tell you this, I'm gonna tell y'all this, anybody who's still doing reaction videos, y'all realize that that, that ship sails because some of these people go so overboard with the reactions, you know, that shit's fake, you know, it's fake. Baby, you say you don't ask others to ask for you. And that's another thing. People, people asking me to ask Fabian to come on their show. People asking me to ask amazing Lucas to come on their show and other folks, or people asking me for my contacts in the gaming industry and whoever else voice actors, whatever to go on their show. People ask, oh, well, I don't know how you're doing that. You got lucky. No, motherfucker. I didn't get lucky. I asked. That's all I did. That's all I ever do. I ask. I reach out. Oak City Gamer, she said, here's my frustration. I get notifications for five subs in a day, and subs never move or they dip down. It's also been a pain. YouTube won't let me set a featured video in studio what the is there three months of the game and lose stuff to be there we do what we want we know who's been there first we're re reinventing ourselves all the time so the youtube revolution will be supervised well Oak City Gamers, I, I, I'm a, I'm a level with you. And this is something that Fabian and I, we talk about this all the time. Um, you, you, uh, you, you just gotta find something you, you care to do and just stick with it. It's not about chasing the success. YouTube is a marathon, you know, you don't need to keep reinventing yourself. Find something you enjoy, find something you're good at, and just make content. That's the formula. You know, it's like what you're saying, the things that you're you're saying that you're doing, I mean that that sounds like original content. I mean, hell, I I never thought of something like that. I tune in. But so long as you have passion for what you're doing. 
That's all that matters. Really all that matters. You know, and it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's literally, it's a marathon. You got to pace yourself. But the biggest thing is consistency. So long as you're consistent, so long as there's, okay. So I guess, I guess there are some keys to success on YouTube. There's consistency and a schedule. So I'm going to take what you said about tube advice. That's actually not a joke. That's actually literal. If you, uh, YouTube is, it's TV. The content we put out is shows. So long as we have a schedule that people know, okay, this is when this person's going to go live. This is when this person's going to put out content. So long as people know, they're going to come there. You just gotta look at it like that. It's, it's, it's weekly content for me every Monday, 8 AM Eastern standard time. There's a new podcast. It's on YouTube. It's on Twitch. It's on all podcast outlets. People know that they're getting a new podcast three times a week on the Wednesday, Friday, 11 AM. You know, they're getting a stream. Now I'm doing two streams in a day. Yo, what's up? Uh, NX. Um, you know, people know they're going to get, now people know they're going to get two streams out of me Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So they know to come in, they know to expect that. They know I'm going to, and I'm, I'm working to make this consistent too, to know that they're going to get two streams, uh, not two streams, but two reviews because I got three different audiences, you know? And so long as you have that schedule that consistency and the biggest key of all is that relationship with your your viewers and to just you know i having one and i think you guys said earlier having you know one loyal viewer is better than having a hundred thousand drones it's so much better Every time you say, even if you don't have original content, you are what sets you apart and makes your channel special. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it actually said, not going to be chatting much, but yo, I'm dropped in. Hey, man, we, we just doing that, uh, my campfire uh, segment where we just, just real talk. Steven, uh, Oxy, you said the content is about us, not the games we get. It's in the name, Oxy Gamers. Gamers, not gaming. Bro. So it's like uh Dr. Disrespect, he's entertaining, even though I hate the games he plays. Look see, so that's why I sub and lurk you on TV two of my six TV setup. <laughs> um everything you said, I've learned from my live streams that you engage with people, they care less about what you play and more about you being a player. Yeah. Like, I already know a lot of you probably don't care about Nino Kuni or any of the RPGs I play. I mean, hell, I could go over and start playing King of Fires 98. I could play Fortnite. I could play whatever. But you guys come here for me, not really what I'm playing. And that's the other thing, too, is valuing the fact that people who could be doing anything else, anything else, have taken time out of their day to spend time with you. The most valuable thing anyone can give us is their time. The most valuable thing we can give aside from love is our time. So you got to appreciate that. Baby, he said, I have no idea what this game is. I come here to hang out with you and talk to you guys in chat. <laughs> right? OC Gamer, you said, I'm interested in what interests you. Seeing your enthusiasm may inspire me to play one of them. I mean, 
I didn't, you know, as far as like me and RPGs, I didn't get into RPGs until like Final Fantasy VII back on the original PlayStation 1. And it just, uh, you know, in my story as to what keeps me, like there's a reason I play so many RPGs. Um, I don't ever really, I don't, I don't think I've ever shared like my, uh, my personal reason for it, but you know, I'm, I'm, it's hey, shut up Sprite Mix. <laughs> um, you know, English isn't my first language. You know, Samoan is, I didn't learn English until I was seven. I didn't come to America until I was seven. And, you know, I've always struggled with English. I struggle with, uh, I have a speech impediment. I stutter, which you guys have probably caught. Um, or you caught me like I just did now. Um, and also for me with RPGs, it was twofold. It was the only way my mother was able to get me to read. And by reading, it's helped me better my my English. It's helped me expand my vocabulary. And I've just been able to learn so much from playing RPGs where I'm reading. That's why I don't mind having to read because, you know, it, it, it helps me, you know. And not only that, but I also have dyslexia. <laughs> so it's like it 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 helps me. force me it helps me by forcing me to 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 push myself you know so that's why i have such an emotional attachment to to rpg and also um if you see me stop talking it's always because uh, i'm thinking i have to translate Simone into English, what I'm trying to say and make sure it sounds right in my head. Um, you know, for me growing up, moving from Samoa to Memphis, you know, living in uh, a ghetto, you know, turning on the news, X amount of people shot and killed, and, you know, growing up poor while we were there and, and you know, not knowing if you're going to make it from day to day. RPGs were my escape. This gaming as a whole was, but RPGs were my way of getting away from reality. I got to step into the shoes of Cloud and wield the Buster Sword and try to save the planet from Meteor and Sephiroth and Genova. You know, playing Goldeneye, I got to be James Bond. That's why I love gaming so much. It's it's given me so much. Great memories. You know, great stories. Great lessons. I've learned a lot. So yeah, that's that's my personal attachment to gaming to, to RPGs. And because I'm a gamer, you know, growing up and, you know, a lot of you probably, you know, are, are with me on the same train of thought, but, you know, growing up reading, you know, Game Pro magazine or Electronic Gaming magazine or tips and tricks or uh, next gen, next generation gamer, like all those gaming magazines as a kid. And. You know, I remember telling my mom that this is, I want to review games. I'd love to do this as a career, as a passion, you know? And I remember being told that I'm, you know, oh, that's silly, and all this other stuff. And, you know, everyone making fun of gaming and boom, it's, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Now. And the fact that Fabian, myself, you guys that we get to do this we get to game and many of us get to make a living from it 
Is it not? It's, it's, it's amazing. So it's because of stuff like that. The fact that we have the opportunity to work with these companies that before you, th th there's no way you would have even realized or even thought of it being possible. And now, you know, they either text away or email away or phone call away. And you know, I value that. I value the relationships I have with these companies. I value being able to play these games and enjoy them as an adult. I value my audience and you guys coming here and spending your time with me and, and, and chopping it up with me like you're doing now. That is why it pisses me off to no end. When I see these YouTubers, they get these games and don't play them. They make these hype videos and don't play these games. They bash these games. They bash these companies. They, they talk about shit that they don't know, or they, they, they pull a, they pull the same thing that the quartering does or richer review tech does, where they just hop on topics that because it's relevant, because it's trending and they can make a video of it. Young Ya does the same thing and give a commentary on something that they may not even be versed in. For clicks. That frustrates me. All right, man. Thank you for coming through. I mean, hopefully I didn't bore you all with my campfire rant, but Oh God, man. Okay. I gotta, I gotta, I'm tired of seeing these folks do all these rants about GameStop because it, it, it it's a very simple thing. You don't like GameStop. Speak with your wallet. Don't shop there. Let them go. If you know, all right, man, thank you for coming through. I appreciate you coming through on the stream. Um, you know, if it, if, 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 if their, their business practices lead to them going under then so be it but if you hate gamestop and i i see so many people dreamcast guy does this all the time how do you make so many videos about gamestop and yet you keep going to gamestop and you keep saying that you'll never shop there again and yet you'd make another video because you went there and say oh they ripped me off no 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 there's a saying Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. If I, if, you know, if, if it's the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time, then motherfucker, you stupid. You just, as uh, anyone who's enjoyed Tropic Thunder would say, you went full retard, man. You never go full retard. He said, you legitimately dislike GameStop and try not to shop there. I don't make a video every time they're in the news. Yeah, all these. It, okay. Have you noticed all these people keep making these doom and gloom? Oh, GameStop's going under. GameStop's going under. GameStop isn't going anywhere. So that's where they, they make them facial expressions like they suck in the... Biggest cock in the world. See, you know, as someone, I used to work for GameStop 
and I've experienced bad customer service from GameStop in the mainland, but like in Hawaii, I've never had bad customer service from GameStop. So, I mean, for me, I would be sad to see GameStop go out of business because I know a lot of good people that work there. And if they went out of business, then that's people losing jobs. You know, people trying to feed themselves, people trying to, to take care of their families. I would feel bad for that aspect. Um, the fact that they're closing so many stores, and I understand that because I have insider knowledge as to why they're doing that. It's like any business. You wouldn't keep, a, keep certain stores open if, you know, it's not generating revenue. That's economics. But do you, you know, a lot of these YouTubers just want to do doom and doom. Oh, we hate GameStop. And my question, I asked this question on someone else's stream is what happens when GameStop, if, if they go under, what happens? Who's going to take up the mantle? Best Buy? Best Buy played all of us with the Gamers Club Unlocked. Target, Walmart. And you think I mean, it's really going to come down to just Amazon. And even then when you got companies that don't focus on gaming, They will push stuff like Best Buy did with Gamers Club Unlocked. It's a gateway to get you in the store. So GameStop going away. Then what? Where are we going to get our games? Companies will be happy that they're gone. It makes pushing the digital, all digital, uh, agenda for them a lot easier. The other thing too is for these collectors who want GameStop to go away, it's kind of contradictory because then they're going to be stuck with a digital future they don't want. I mean, yeah, mom and pop stores and Amazon will be the spot you can go to, but I'm just saying, is it really the best for us gamers for GameStop to go under? Or is a revision of their policies that people hate, would that be better? Just saying, that's, that's my thoughts on that. I don't know if it's really a great thing. I know a lot of people have said that they will jump for joy when GameStop goes out of business. I'm like, okay, you're going to be happy that a lot of people are losing their jobs. That's fucked up, but it's what it is. And see, I mean, I know you guys are giving these examples of stuff like, you know, in my years when I worked for GameStop, I never, you know, and I've worked GameStop in Hawaii. I've worked it when I was in Washington and I've worked it in Oregon. These things that you guys are saying, like, I, and I can, you know, Maybe some of you have worked there too, but the things that I was trained on and that you guys are speaking on to your experiences, that seems like an individualistic thing that was done. Not That's not a company standard. So I mean, and I'm not trying to downplay that, you know, or a white knight GameStop. I'm just saying like from the corporate side, that's not what's supposed to be done. And those, those situations that happen like that, they need to be exposed for that. 
because that's how you improve them. You expose them for that type of bullshit. That's legitimate exposure. Not all these things that Dreamcast guy keeps putting. You know, and I, I love mom and pop shops too. We used to have this spot out here called uh, uh, Toys and Joys. And Toys and Joys was really good because we could, you could literally go there and get anything. Import, you know, cosplay stuff, collector's editions of things. It was a mom and pop shop. And they closed. They've been closed now for 10 years. A lot of us out here grew up with it. And especially here in Hawaii, we don't really have a whole lot of options. Best Buy barely carries any new game other than what's super popular. Same with Target, same with Walmart. We barely have places to get games. If you order anything on Amazon, it takes, so two days shipping to Hawaii from Amazon or takes a week, a seven or eight days, sometimes 10 days. But at least out here, you go to GameStop, you got access to games. If you, if you're the physical type of gamer, but I mean, you can always go digital. I personally don't mind digital. But Amazon constantly fucks us over out here in Hawaii. And these other companies don't care to even carry anything. So, I mean, that's for me. I, I don't want to see GameStop go. I have great customer service with people here. And like majority of the shit that you guys have seen that I've had from posters to collectors to things that I, I have is just because, you know, and they, maybe it's a Hawaii exclusive thing. I don't know, but you know, I'd hate to see it go. I, I, I really would. I would hate to see GameStop go. We'd be fucked out here in Hawaii. Damn, have I been ranting for an hour? I guess somebody's gonna come in and be like, yeah, I thought this is a Nino Cooney stream. <laughs> oh, goodness. No knee. <laughs> Man. <laughs> so it's, it, you know, I, I do have thoughts at times that, uh, Zero, you said uh, some places have terrible connections to certain places. They'd be screwed if it things went completely digital because connection is super slow. Hawaii would be fucked if we went all digital. You can barely... Okay. I have one terabyte. Oh, not one terabyte. One gig internet. And... You can... Barely... Barely get one gig in Hawaii. You can even rare get 500, 
150, 97% of Hawaii's, you can only get five to 10 megs for internet. So if we went all digital, screwed. Hawaii does not have the infrastructure to support that. Hell, it took Hawaii three year, three to four years in the 4G phone internet speed to get 4G, even longer for 3G and 2G. A lot of folks in Hawaii like that. All right, HLO. Uh, no, I didn't review Super Mario Odyssey. I streamed it. And then the main reason I didn't do anything with it is uh, because Nintendo Back when um, Mario Odyssey was a thing, Nintendo was just hitting everybody with copyright claims left and right. Um, I played it all the way through, start to finish. I love Odyssey. Absolutely love the game. I should review it. I wouldn't be against it. What internet speed do you have, bro? So did anybody get the the switch light um i know nx uh revolution has it he says that uh the games actually look a lot better on it um pixel density is higher that's pretty dope oh steven you want uh oliver to walk up and be like <laughs> serious well the laughing would be drippy but uh the other one would be uh the other one would be <laughs> would be you I'm telling you you said you didn't get the switch light um i'm actually getting the switch light um i'll be getting the pokemon um, I was going to pre-order it, but Nintendo is actually going to be sending it to me. So I am, you know, I'll put it through his paces. I'll test it out. The only thing I'm disappointed in is the fact that the battery is not as good as a revised switch, which if there's anything I'd rather have at this point, I'd rather have the I switch than switch light um because i'm afraid the font on a switch light would be too small it's already too small on a lot of games that's true
Uh, Steven, if you don't mind my asking, how old are you? Are you about, uh, five years older than me? I'm, I'm about to be 31. Welcome back, welcome back. So, you know, shifting gears back to like, uh, here's a thought I was, I, I meant to say earlier. I do feel like, you know, my, uh, my rants like this that I, I do, and I don't, I know they're not for everyone. Um, and quite possibly they could hurt my channel, but the thing is, I mean, it's me being true to me. I am. Um, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but you know, for those of you who are here, you guys that enjoy it, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you guys who come through for my streams. You know, many of you guys is it's a little late at night. Some, it may be early in the morning. Some, it may be in the afternoon, but the fact that y'all take the time to spend time with me, it's priceless. Check me out, dolly boy. I look the business in this little number. Huh? Oh, there's marvelous. <laughs> what do you think? Hmm? Yeah, you did call it. So basically. is very modest that is a miyazaki style game so, uh, miyazaki game so what do you guys and this is out of me and my curiosity what do you guys enjoy about my streams and the content I'm about? Like, what what is it about me or what i do that has you guys Come back time and time again. And I'd like to hear from each one of you guys. Fine. Uh, let me know. To the talks. My unfiltered talks or the real talks are both. Said, uh, 
Sprite Mix, you say the talks. Zero, you say the chats. They are entertaining and fun to listen to. Antonio, you said to be honest, the conversation. You guys say both. Steven, he said usually there aren't hundreds of people in here, so you actually read our comments. That too. When there are thousands of people, it is hard for the person streaming to keep up with the chat. Um, well, it goes back to what I said. Like, I, I, the fact that you guys could be doing anything else and you're spending time here in the chat on the stream watching my content, you know, chopping it up with me on and off camera, I greatly appreciate you. So, I, I, I've, I've seen this thing where with other streamers and YouTubers where you have to give them money for them to acknowledge you. And it's like, what my thought process, what separates that mentality and methodology from that of a hooker? HLO, you say, I love the talks. Both are great. Plus the game I look for. Plus the game I look for, these games I normally don't know about, don't always know if I'll like them. Antonio, you said, I do wonder how the stream would be with more than 100 active users chatting. Could be overwhelming. Steven said, don't get all mushy or I am leaving. I have a fear of intimacy. What? Um... I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I appreciate you guys. <clears throat> um, I mean, I look at it like this. I've got over 11,000 subscribers and eight to 10 of you guys come through and watch my stuff. So you guys mean more to me and 11,000 subscribers. Also, I'm sure many of them are dead subs. So, I mean, it is what it is. Don't stress it. If I get more people, I mean, having one or two people in the stream, you know, that works for me. Having... You know, having, um, I mean, if I ever get to the point where I've got more than 10 people watching and chatting, cool. I'm content with what I have now. Yeah, it's that time. <laughs> man, if I had a Chun Li costume on, man, I would be instantly banned on Twitter, on uh, Twitch. Y'all know this. It would be so quick. But even that story, like, people aren't covering the full, um, uh, The full thing because even in that situation it's not even really that she's wearing the chun Lee costume it's the fact that she kept pointing it down to her crotch and um she yeah she kept readjusting and focusing it on her crotch 
That was one of the reasons that they kind of went after him. Jerry say, isn't this where Lehua is stuck on? Does that mean you Wait, she, she, is she further along than me? Hey, I identify as an energy drink. My brand is rain. Although some days I'm NOS. Some days I'm Rockstar. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, Antonio, there's a whole hell of a lot more to the situation. But, you know, Rich or Review Tech or any of these, you know, people who just jump on topics for clicks, they don't cover it. Oh, in her original playthrough. Yeah, this is where she, I believe this is where she got stuck. I identify as a racially fluid alien from planet Malcolm. Oh God, you can't be serious. <laughs> oh, y'all want to, y'all want to dive into that. Okay. I'm curious, and this is just purely out of my curiosity. What does everyone think about all this gender fluidity? There's over a hundred different genders. How, how did we get to this point? And if gender is a spectrum, how do we even know it's a spectrum? How do we identify something we can't even understand? I just, I don't, I'm not trying to knock it. I just don't understand it. And when I ask, <laughs> when I ask about it, I get called a bigot or a misogynist. And I'm like, I don't understand it. I'm asking you to explain it to me. That's what I thought. You can tell what you are by looking down at what's in your pants. But uh, I am curious also to know, guys, I know I'm asking you a lot of questions, but um, what are some things that you guys would like to see on the channel? Like, what are some things that uh, would you like for you, you would like to see me either do or you would like to like, would you guys like to be more involved with like the direction of the channel, the content I put out, the podcast? I know, I know I've put up like polls on the community tab on YouTube. But I, you know, I, I want to ask you guys, like, what is it you guys would like to see? HLO, you said, my opinion, I don't care what you think of yourself. This is don't attack me for not caring. That's exactly what I thought. So. Antonio, you said the discussion already dies the moment you say, so guys, what are your thoughts about gender? Just, be, just because you said guys in the beginning. I am uh, assuming the gender. Ah! Um, TV said, I want to see a different game because I want to play this. Pride Mix, you said, yeah, that's why I'm here. I can care less about the game. Edward, you say yes, and of the rose, right mix. How many times did the party AI fuck you over in the battle? <laughs> One time too many, dude. One time too many.
But it's only because I didn't set the tactics right. I mean, yeah, it is stupid, but I didn't set the tactics right, so that's on me too. No, oh, but for real though, what do you guys want to see? What would you guys like for me to do? Or would you want to be more involved? I mean, that's also why I've got the discord. We can talk not only online, but offline because I would really like to have you guys be more involved. So when my six year old son puts on a dress, I say, son, take off that dress and give me. That's old school right there. So that's what I meant the other day when I said, trust me, the worst part is um, the discord has to be cool. I mean, the, the biggest thing, I mean, uh, yeah, that's one of the things I would love to do. Um, I've been toying with this idea. I want to start a podcast slash stream. Where say like we, we take, uh, we just, you know, we take a topic and we just dissect it from different angles. Everybody gets their input on there. We, you know, there's no, no filter, anything, anything goes, you know, Uh, Steven, sorry, you say we play Team Smash and Discord and stream it. Oh, yeah, you say, I don't know if you can do what I would like to see you when you uh, getting demonetized. What is it you would like to see me do? Steven, you said, uh, free for all and 3v3s. I'm down for it. I'm fully down for it. Like, I, I would love to do something, you know, building, you know, we collectively coming together, you know, us building this community is something I would like to do. And like, also if you guys like, for those of you who are content creators, they're looking to, to grow or those of you who are looking to get into content creation. Like I really want to be able to help be a resource to help you guys, you know, embrace your dream. This is something you want to do. I want to be able to utilize resources that I've gained or I've learned. And, you know, I'm not the only one in the group that, that, has resources to use like miss djm um valuable valuable resource oh hell she's she's going to twitchcon to speak on the panel you know she got to interview her and her her co-host got to interview the guy who cre is cre who created and is creating tw uh, cyberpunk 2077 they had the exclusive interview with them. So. Oh, she's got a good sense. You, you don't have to worry about that. Then you decided to stick with Kung Fu. Why is that?
Well, the biggest thing about content creation, man, is literally just starting. Um, a lot of the things you find along the way, and um, you just literally go from there. You don't have to be a gamer or a techie. You just learn as you go. Exactly. YouTube YouTube is about you. Content creation is about creating content that you enjoy. You would like to, you know, share with other people. It's really about the passion. Uh see me said this game makes me feel happy inside just like me as I can like me as I can kill. Great. Y'all seriously want me to um, to switch up to another game? Okay, everybody in the group. HLO says he's good with either. Come on, you guys. <laughs> right, right, Zero. I mean, control has a lot of horror elements in it. Play Street Fighter 30th. really want me to not play this game anymore, huh? Yeah, 
Are you saying Mega Man is in the OG Mega Man 5 or X? Yeah, I haven't finished X that one. No, I have I haven't. I didn't beat it. I mean, if anything, I'd love to play Titan Rage. Ugh. Uh, if you guys run around, it probably King of Fire is Dead cells? Yeah, I should have dead cells. Yeah. Uh, Killer Instinct, that's on the Xbox, man. I have the Xbox in the original one. That's the thing is, man, y'all trying to get me to do all this and I'm not even. I'm tired. <laughs> I know. I don't know what the hell they want. Ah. Uh. I'm not dodging you. It's just the street fighter you want to play. I don't really care for. Mines is alpha too. 
but I, I don't want to have to go through all that setup right now. And I'm not gonna even lie, like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm beat. Oh, y'all want me to play a hard game? Here we go. Hard of fighting too. Y'all, since y'all really want me to play a hard game. This game is so damn hard. screen Motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't even get a, I didn't get a punch in. Jesus. Finally, one win. How are you gonna punch the goddamn... Wow.
Man, screw this game. Y'all want to see me play my the game I'm actually legitimately good at? All right. What's an SNK? I mean, like for real, how many, how many SNK games are on the Switch? Makes absolutely no sense. It's like it's literally like sixty or so SNK games. Like damn near every SNK game that has come out. SNK games on the Switch. <laughs> Never heard of it. That's fun when he's winning. Oh, it gets harder. Okay, I gotta, I gotta stop and say this. You know what's actually interesting is the fact that people actually had the balls to say what's an SNK and who's Terry Bogart. Terry's entire franchise is on the switch from his first game to his last game in Garo Mark of the Wolves. It makes no sense.
All right, MX. Call him Terry Booger. Yo, could you guys imagine if if Kyo Kusanagi gets introduced? Dark Moon. Who's that? I can see Chun Li being brought to Smash. I want Kyo Kusanagi. I think Kyo would be dope in Smash.
I'll go back to Nino Kuni after this one. I was having fun with that one. having fun with it oh and another thing too the reason i don't want to play fighters or shooters is because my d-pad is not very this is not as accurate as uh, i want it uh no you have to pay for the characters Yeah, so with my the D pad on this pro controller, I can't do uh I can't do uh Eo's chain punch combo. Which annoys me because that's that's how I play Kyo. No, I never did. Akira Yuki would be dope. Wait, how do you what? All right, it's a lot. Catch you on the next one.
I hate playing this with this controller. Can't do any of my con my uh, combos. <laughs> it's frustrating me. I I'm only gonna play 15 more minutes. Um, Cause then I gotta get ready to go get Lehu up. But yeah, I I'm getting frustrated playing fighting games cause my D-pad, I'm doing certain things and it's just not working. No, I, I have the, the fight stick, but it's, it's in the other room. I thought I had it here, but. I know. I was using um using my pro controller. So at least I have I have an idea. Do you guys want to see me play fighting games, shmups? Let's go horror games. Are you wait, Chris, what's going on? What, what are you talking about, man? I'm kind of confused, dude. What what's going on? I mean, I don't quite understand what you mean. Like you're saying, loop. What are you referring to? Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm confused. Like I don't. Is it like a situation you're going through? Is it an emotional barrier, a mental one? Like what? When you say loop, like what do you mean?
Um, Yeah, it sounds like you're burnt out. Um, and if you're if you're fluctuating between happy and depressed, think of it like this: you choose to be happy. If you ever get to a point where you're, you know, where you're you. You're saying you just feel negative for no reason. Sometimes that's a sign that you need to do some self-reflection. Respect. Um, you. Method you could do to get past the, uh, feeling bad and negative and you're saying you keep you know you try to keep pushing for positivity but the moment you get far you're right back where you um you have to choose to be happy and also when certain things come you, you say you pushing for po positivity i think you just revert back Here, here's a little tip things whatever you resist persists so if it's an internal thing and you're constantly feeling this feeling sometimes you gotta allow it to just run and get out of there. um and then choose to be happy. Um, but you're still in a state of gratitude. And that can help you get out of that. And a state of gratitude, in order for you to like get there, you can be like, think of things that you have you have your health you have love you have things that you know, we all have things that we take for granted put things in perspective from Yeah, learn to focus on the good that you You have to appreciate you got a job, play video games, play an Apple Arcade, you got friends, you got family, you got us. Ooh, you know, we care about you. Here is a community. Take some some steps back and appreciate the things that you have because there are people that don't have that. And you know, that's not being said to guilt trip you. To help you focus is important. Like I said, sometimes when you that constantly pops up, it's a sign that you need to look within. To do some introspection. Like those things. You can't keep doing this. Unhealthy. I've been there. 
Yeah. Focus on the thing that that focus on things that you can And in the power of gratitude is very, very uh, a very powerful thing. Yeah. Look within. Everything you need is within you. Exactly. Pick and choose. <laughs> Thought you were going to sleep, man. Is it too hot? Oh, man, you're more than welcome, man. I mean, literally, if you ever need to talk, we're all here for you. You know, be it on stream or off, you know, DM any of us. Hell, everybody's going through something. And just knowing that there are others who are there, that's, that's more than enough right there. being said I do need to get ready to go get one so so I am going to call it a stream because I gotta go get her and I gotta cook and then yeah so with that being said I hope y'all had fun. I spent more time ranting and raving on this stream than actually playing the game. But uh, I had a great time. As always, I enjoy you guys uh, coming through. Uh, Chris, literally, man, if you ever need to talk, you already just, just hit me up, man. Hit me up and any of the people up here. You know, we're all here. Uh, let us know in the Discord, too, if you ever need to talk. self-reservation man that's that's vital um yeah thank you zero for coming through simply chris edward hlo sprite mix uh steven uh babian and everyone else who's come through thank you guys for coming through on the stream i'm sorry my energy was low on this one and just in general today, I, I just feel, I guess because I'm tired, I'm battling a bit of depression, but mine is just because, just because I was supposed to have gotten out those reviews and I didn't get to do those. And uh, anyway, that's on me. But um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the stream, you want to catch more streams like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Mikhail Casanova. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 a.m., I have a stream. And then I'm... If you guys like these second streams, if you, know, if you want me to do two streams on the days that I stream, I'm definitely down to do so. Other than that... Um, 
yeah if you want to support the channel you can become a channel member starts is as low as two dollars a month gets you exclusive early access to content videos podcasts and input on the channel and also we have patreon if you guys want to support us on patreon of as low as two dollars a month or a dollar a month with you guys and um you know if you want to uh pick up the game or anything links to that is down in the description below the amazon affiliate links also help support the channel get a little kickback from that and um as far as saturday streams i, I think i might just go back to my two o'clock stream uh, maybe three i'm not too sure um if we're gonna go with these two streams a day i might just do what i'm doing now and uh only have three days that i stream because i feel like i feel like saturday might burn me out i'm not too sure i don't want to be low energy like this on my streams going forward like i'm really low energy right now because i don't feel bad about the reviews your reviews are at least it did not like i tried man i really tried my best um, but yeah, I need to head out, uh, catch you guys in the next one. If you haven't already joined the discord and if you're in the discord, let's get the conversation going. I'd love to talk to you guys more. So, uh, with that being said, we're signing out, catch y'all in the next one. Deuces wild, too sweet, be the elite, keep your head up and have a blessed night.